Glory to the Lamb, Galilee Lamb, Jesus the Christ, hey? Isn't he wonderful, our Lord? Here we are on the 10th, Paradise, now church, Sunday meet, and it's the 10th of the 2nd, 2019. And uh, on another very cool day, Hey, the weather's been beautiful, hasn't it? Definitely. <clears throat> Let me start by saying that the owner of a, a Krypton currency, Krypton currency exchange, died the other day. He's only thirty year old. He had Canada's largest exchange for Krypton currency. And uh, he took with him the only password there was, he, only he knew it. And uh, for account holdings of the people, $262 million. And no one knows the password. But as my son said, they'll probably hack that and find it out anyway. But once again, it, it's an Ecclesiastes 9.12, isn't it? You know, death comes suddenly like a snare on a bird. And humanity has this habit of saying, I'm going to sort it out tomorrow or two weeks' time or next week. I'll sort it out then. Hey? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And the going to do's Will, will not enter the kingdom of God because they were going to do it but they never done it so he's only 30 year old 30 year, years old that young man he is on the top of the heap hey? 30 years old and he had all that going for him and just carved it just out of nowhere that, doesn't that tell you something you know the old brother Donald Wilson's revelation of muckrake of 1,000 project or 10,000 projects. <laughs> so all it is is a muckrake, isn't it? They're just building all this plastic timber and steel, building their buildings and so tied up in it, so tied up in the material they forgot about their soul I forgot there's a judgment day. What? They forgot there's a judge and the judge ain't gay. The judge isn't a homo or a lesbian or a thief or a liar or a drunk. The judge ain't Buddha or Muhammad. The judge ain't the Pope or Brian Houston. The judge is Jesus. Does he get angry? Well, the Bible says he, he has a cup of wrath, just like I have in front of me a cup of water. But as I'm drinking this water, it's getting less and less in there. And I'll have to ask my son in about 10 minutes to get me another one. Another cup of water. Probably 10 or 15 minutes. I feel thirsty today. If you're thirsty, come to the waters. Eh? There is, there's a vast supply. Come to the river that never runs dry, the river, the word of God. So, uh, got off the beaten track there for a minute. But, uh, People seem to think that um, Jesus don't get angry, but the scriptures say that he has a cup of wrath. It's a cup of indignation. If you don't know what that word means, make it a point to find a dictionary or get on your mobile phone and then get your dictionary there. Or you can just key it in. You don't need a dictionary on your phone. Just key it in if you've got an iPhone and key in indignation and see what it means. It's not, it's not happy. 
It's not Sasid says him. The cup of the wrath of God filled up full strength. He said it's filling up. It's not getting less. It's filling up. And it's going to overflow. People don't want to hear that, I know. But I'm going to tell you because I love you. I think I love you. Pope Francis publicly admits to the sexual abuse of nuns to the point of even slavery in the nunneries. And he also admits it's an ongoing problem. He said it very casually. It's an ongoing problem that we're looking at. Slavery of nuns. Think about it. Dear me. We're looking into it. We've got Mexican drug cartels now affiliating with Australian bikey gangs. And they just had a nice little haul. The federal police uh, intercepted a haul of $1.29 billion. And they said that this, if they never intercepted it, I think they intercepted it in America. From Mexico to America to Australia, I think the route was. But they intercepted it. The Australian Federal Police were in on it, $1.29 billion worth, and they said it would have made this uh, m methamphetamine, and there was also uh, cocaine or heroin involved, it would have made up 15 million hits of ice. Now you think about the chaos. Hey, hey, hey. We're looking at nightmares here, 219. You think of the chaos, the nightmares that would have brought to single young men, my son's age, only 19, they're on ice, they're just like maniacs. That, that, that's the, all they do is run drugs, go to the gym, take steroids and, 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 and throw down ice. They're just like maniacs. And that's the way they live. And, and they get their bodies covered in ink. And they think that's tough. They think that's a man. That's not a man. That's a gutless wonder. That's a gutless coward. They can't face reality of life. They're playing the chameleon with their ink and their tattoos. You know? They're pumping themselves up with his iron, but inside they're the same little man inside. Same little man inside. We go back to the same cliche, don't we? Real men walk with Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Hey? Affiliating with outlaw bikey gang. They're in your neighbourhood now, churning out drugs to your children and destroying families and relationships and marriages. I've seen on the advertised on TV, now they've got a new show on TV. This is for children to watch and everyone. Teenagers are bad women, or no, bad wives, bad mothers. Just behaving like whores. Filthy, unclean whores. And now these young people are going to tune into that and say, oh, this is the way to go. This looks like fun. Like, 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 like. No. It's the sign of the times. It, there's no respect... There's no, nothing sacred. There's no, nothing. They're just being the God of this age, the God of this world is numbing, numbing the senses of this generation to say, it doesn't matter what you do, just 
don't hurt men. Just be nice to each other, but you can just live like a devil and a dog. And it's going to be okay. Now you're going to end up in hell. And you'll probably get a taste here on earth, a, a, a living hell, with drug addiction or herpes or AIDS, sleeping around from man to man and woman to woman and men with men and women with women. Sexual diseases that will kill you, they're starting points. Drug addiction that you're just like a vegetable. And that's what Australia is full of. And they call it the great south land of the Holy Spirit. It's becoming a drug running capital of the world. The government uh, computers this week on the news that they've been hacked. Government computers hacked. You talk about nightmares 219? Brisbane International Airport, a, a bloke runs crazy wielding a knife, a machete, uh, threatening a bomb uh, plant. He's got to unleash a bomb there. Nightmare 219. Two weeks before that, I was there distributing the word of God. <laughs> uh, Townsville, well we know that's a nightmare, don't we? It's it, it's just turned into uh, mud city, and we know what mud is symbolic of sin in the Bible. And the more they try to dig themselves out, the more the rain comes. And then it came further into the west, northwest, and it's wiped out two hundred and fifty thousand head of cattle. They had the drought for, for the last decade now. They've been slapped down. I wanted rain. I'll give you rain. And all these cattle are stuck in the mud with the sheep. And therefore, the, the dairy, vegetable and meat prices are going to skyrocket. Talk about nightmare, 219. Oh, no. you got these petty Pentecostals. And Evangelica is saying, oh, 2019, the year of prosperity, the year of increase. Oh, don't worry, they're churning it out. No, year of nightmares. That's what the Lord showed me. Super Bowl uh, football just finished. I don't know who won. I think it was the... I don't follow gridiron, but... I think it was the Patriots. They won the game or the season. But you can advertise at the Super Bowl because it goes all around the world. $175,000 a second. And I worked it out at Paradise Now Church. We can afford to advertise there for about four thousandth of a second. I don't know if that takes us on, but we can ring them up. We'll be able to advertise for four thousandth of a second. If it's 170,000 US dollars a second, we could probably advertise for about four thousandth of a second. That's if we save up <laughs> for 10 years. <laughs> oh dear. Hey, isn't it wonderful to walk with the Lord? Thy loving kindness. A black racist woman commented on my Facebook and, and she said, I'm not sure which article it was, but I have so many articles going. This black racist woman said, oh, you got to sort out your white Jesus first. And her name was Pleasant. And then she signed, down the bottom she find, signed off with, Jesus is a hoax. I just went, dilute. I deleted her. It's a lot nice to be able to delete. Delete, delete, delete. Love it. Anthony the Jock Mundine. Anthony Mundine, an Australian boxer. He got that flogging from the horn, remember? Jeff Horn, the teacher, flogged him. 
cool, calm and collective. Bang, bang, it's all over. Red Rover. And he was having his portrait painted the other day by a comedian. I think he's a comedian. Asian bloke. And he's a painter too. He does, does good murals too. I might have to ring him up. Um, and he was telling this, the guy doing his portrait w w when the guy asked him about his uh, success in his boxing and his beliefs, he said he was a Muslim. And he said, well, surprisingly enough, he said, the Aboriginal law is pretty much identical to the Quran, to the Muslim belief, in that they believe in one God. So they're oneness. <laughs> they don't believe in Jesus. So. They believe in one God. There's one God for everyone. So, oh, Jock's got a bit of universalism in him and one world church in him. and Oh, what a mixed bag. The Muslim faith is the same as the Aboriginal law. Well, we're in big trouble, aren't we? If that's the case. I don't believe it is. Maternity wards are in crisis. Last week it was the teachers. What I mentioned about teaching, the school teachers are in crisis. Not enough. They're, they're falling short by the thousands. And people are exiting because of the abuse of the students and the wages and conditions are terrible. But maternity ward uh, is feeling the pinch. I don't think Mark Latham's going to ease the squeeze here, but babies and mums will die unless there is staff, unless there is a huge staff injection. In one hospital, the nurses have been told to hold their tongue or they'll be sacked because they're not to mention that they're paying for the patient's food out of their own purse because the hospital is not providing hot food. It's all sandwiches. This is a bit of a combo, isn't it, of my prophecies. 2001 was third world Australia. You got nurses paying for tucker, going down the canteen to get tucker for the patients because there's no, no hot tucker. It's a cross between the 219 nightmare prophecy and the 2001 um, Australia, the third world country. Graziers are set to lose hundreds of millions of dollars in stock because of the rain. Hey? And there's also a childcare crisis. Look, 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 all this I've been mentioning here is 219. We're only a month in. I'm in good form. Childcare crisis now, they're paying up, up to $200 a day per child. Who can afford that? That's why you got churches, they dump them at the churches. They're not there because they believe in Jesus, they dump their children there because they want to go out somewhere and not take the child. You can say amen, oh my, or why. I'm going to say hallelujah. Dump the child off for a feed and, and, and you've got someone looking after them, looking over them while they go to the pub or go to the beach or go gambling or whatever they do. Go down the beer garden. But they won't see the parents in church. You see the children there. And if the parents do roll up, it's only to show face and then move on again for another six months. You don't see them again. But that's the world we live in. A world of dishonesty and cheats liars and thieves. Up in the north, in, in Townsville in the northwest, Ingham, Bowen, Mackay, they're facing a new nightmare now. It's a nightmare of um, looters. And the floods are bringing out the best in people, aren't they? And that's their best. Looting. So they've had to now, they've had to deploy uh, and employ scores of extra police to uh, intercept the looters. Looters, what sort of people are they? 
their houses are halfway under and they're in, in, in the dinghy going through the lounge, knocking, knocking off something that's hanging on the wall out of the water. Oh, look, you, you know, hey, Trubler, is it me and you? Is it mum and dad? Is it a cockatoo? Hey, we grabbed that cockatoo clock, eh? <laughs> Do you stand beside you, mate? When you're robbing him? Hey, true blue. And there you have it. And they're facing another couple of nightmares of uh, disease. And, and mosquito infestation, dengue probably, and disease in the mud and the water and nightmare 219, hey? It's been said that some graziers will never recover. So uh, I think I'll leave that there and we'll We'll start to press forward into the, into the Word. Let me say before we start, I got a little bit more info on the Seven Day Adventist Church. Yes, it deepens and gets worse. I wasn't even doing a search. It, it's just so much garbage, the Seven Day Adventist teach. It's just a hoax. The Seven Day Adventist... Now, let me make this clear. This is the teaching of E.G. White. I call her E.J. as in Jezebel. E.J. White. Because Jezebel was a woman in the Bible that was a liar, a man-hater. And she was a false teacher and a false prophetess. And that fits E.G. White to, to the T. Now, this is all backed up by books and written in books that she wrote. She said that, and also let me say, if you say you're a seven-day Adventist, a bona fide seven-day Adventist, you will uphold the teachings of E.G. White. As I said recently, they say you've got to be a vegetarian to enter the kingdom, they say you've got to keep the Sabbath to enter the kingdom. Hey? If you're a true seven-day Adventist, that's the case. But if you're just a pseudo seven-day Adventist, an SSDA, you don't do those. So you're not really a seven-day Adventist. You're just some come-day-go-day cult. But Ellen G. White taught this. Adam was not with Eve when she was tempted in the garden. But Genesis 3, 6 says that she gave the fruit to him who was with her. She's an outright liar. Adam was deceived. The scriptures say clearly in the New Testament letters that Adam was not deceived. The woman was deceived. He made a willful decision to obey his wife rather than the word of God. Babel was built before the flood of Noah, E.G. White said. No, go to the scriptures. Babel was built after the flood. Jesus is not God Almighty. Well, that's another lie, isn't it? Atonement for your sin was not completed at the cross. <laughs> but Jesus did say, all has been accomplished, it is finished. The blood of Christ does not cancel sin. This woman is anti-Christ at the core. Satan bears our sins. <laughs> you can know the day and the hour of Jesus coming. This is all found in the books of E.G. White, so-called self-proclaimed prophet Parents, the parents' fate can save their children. 
No, they, it cannot. You can't eat pork. You can't eat meat. There is no eternal hell. Seven day Adventists are the only one true church. Uh, we've done the rest, the Ark, Michael, the Archangel, and blah, blah, blah. Selling the books that Ellen G. White wrote. So there you go. Let's move into the message today. We're in the pretty much the third part of uh, how's your shoes? How's your shoes? Lay off of my blue suede shoes. In the writings of 1 Peter, chapter 1, we're going to be reading from there. 1 Peter chapter 1. I forgot to uh, welcome our visitor today. What's your name again, brother? What's his name? Charlie. What's your name? Brendan. Brandon. Let's welcome Brandon. Oh, go easy on your hands. You don't want to get too excited. Right? You don't want to wear your, your foot fingerprints out. It's here. Yeah. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren love one another fervently with a pure heart having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of God Amen through the word of God which lives and ab abides forever because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, the flower falls away, the word of the Lord endures forever. Uh, most people uh, have not grasped that as yet. Because they're still hungering and pressing forward and wanting to be someone and wanting to be glorified on the tennis court or the football field. And all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fades away, it falls away. Hey? Solomon, King Solomon said this, I believe it complements what I said in the prelude this morning. If we just go to Songs of Solomon uh, and uh, Songs of Solomon We just go there. So, uh, and we'll read from Songs of Solomon. I love what Solomon says. Although it has been uh, twisted terribly, it has been twisted. Uh, terribly over the decades and even the centuries centuries everyone's still looking for songs of Solomon it's just near Ecclesiastes and let me say just before uh, Isaiah Song of Solomon chapter 1 Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 1. <laughs> sorry about that. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Verse 2. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. 
What profit has a man from all his labour in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. I'll leave it there. Vanity of vanities. Hey? One passes away. Hey? Another comes. No matter what we do on this earth, it will all turn to dust in the end. And so today, I want to highlight again and exalt the Word of God, who is Jesus. In our first message of how, How's Your Shoes, we concluded that we need to be sensitive because we deconstructed the word shod. We were in Ephesians initially, Ephesians 6, 15, if my memory serves me well. And we concluded that we need to be sensitive to the word and we're not going to be sensitive to the word of God without the spirit of God. We're not going to be protected. We're not going to uh, have our feet shod, are we? We're not going to be prepared for the day, the week, the month or the years to come or the coming of the Lord if we're not in the Word. And then we moved on to the H in Shod, which was holy ground. And uh, last week we looked at walking in his way. Walking in the way of the Lord. And we said that our shoes are not just for walking but for dancing and running. And for marching and for working and they are part of our clothing. The Lord said to Peter to be clothed in humility. And I don't believe there's anything more humble than putting on shod shoes. Today our message is scriptural shoes. Amen. Be clothed in humility. Well the armour of God is a very humbling uh, clothing uh, rig out, isn't it? When you have a look at the armour. It all leads back to Jesus. It all leads back to the Word. It all leads back to humility. It keeps us in line in the straight and narrow. So... Today, our primary verse is going to be verse 25. But the word of the Lord endures forever. So our scriptural shoes, our scriptural shoe, shoes endure forever. And you won't find that anywhere else on planet earth except in the word. We can't have shoes. We can't buy it. We, we, the scripture tells us here uh, how we have those scriptural shoes in 1 Peter 1.22 by the purifying of our souls through the obeying of the truth. The world don't have the pure mind set will or emotion. The, the people of the world, their mindset is scattered. Uh, my mum used to say, that, that one's, he's got a rat, that bloke. You know, he's a bit ratty. There's a rat in his head. He's all over the place, like Granny's geese. There's no stability. There's no consistency. There's no persistency. There's no uh, lucidity. 
You can't have that stuff without the Christ. I know firsthand because before I met Jesus, I was all that I just mentioned. I was inconsistent, impersistent, unpersistent, or whatever you want to say. I had no clear thinking. I had a rat in my head. It was a devil rat. And it was just jumping from one new fad to the next. Until I came to Jesus and put on the Holy Ghost stabiliser. And now I'm getting round the corners very nicely. Hey? And all is well because I know that blue suede shoes are only temporary but scriptural shoes are forever. His word endures forever. We need something enduring in these days, don't we? We need something that's going to stick. One thing we know about the Lord, we know where we stand with him. You don't really know at times where you stand with certain people because unconverted people are not sometimes but most of the times very changeable. And they're with you one minute and gone the next. They're lying to you one minute and they're being honest next and you really don't know where you are. <laughs> But when you're dealing with a converted person and you're dealing with someone who really respects Jesus and uh, reveres Jesus, uh, these people are a pleasure to be around. You can rely on them and you can trust them. And th they have a word of honour and they are faithful to the place of being loyal, even. And... The worst part about it is that they are only few. The scriptures say few find the narrow way. Because God only lets few. He's not out to only have few. But that's who are only qualify are few. And uh, many departed from Jesus. And few find the narrow gate. <laughs> many take the wide road. Uh, and many are not honest. And most people are not, are not honest. You're pushed to find honest people today. People who love Jesus. Really love him. And they don't have a secret agenda. They don't even have an agenda. Because they have received that revelation that they're no longer their own. In fact, I was only saying this morning to Brother Thomas that um, until people, you know, you hear a lot of uh, stories about people going to church and they got saved and, and they went to a crusade and got saved. I believe they did for a moment. I believe they had some sort of a emotional rescue for that moment. But I believe 95% of these crusade people are not saved. I truly do believe that. You think that's crazy. And you know why I believe that? Because I believe, I am one of the few who believe that you have to have encountered a day of visitation with God in order to be saved. You have to encounter a day of visitation. You have to have a divine meeting with Jesus. And that does not come any other way except conviction of your sin. And con conviction of your hopelessness. All the rest is just religion. It's just hoopla. Evangelicalism and Pentecostalism. 
It's just hoopla, Roman Catholicism, Seven Day Adventism, Mormonism. It's just rocking up to a church on whatever day they've nominated, Saturday, Friday, Sunday, wearing the clothes they prescribe, maybe white shirts with badges on it, saying, My name's Bill or Elder John or Elton John or whatever. And putting some money in a bag and having a feed and being polite. You know, there's a lot, a lot of people, a lot of polite people out there and educated people. And there's a lot of people out there that um, are famous and well-to-do and generous and kind, but they're not saved. They're not saved from sin, self, Satan, the wrath to come or hellfire. And the cup of God's wrath and, and the cup of God's indignation is filling up. It's not getting less. It's not getting lower and emptying. It's filling up. One day it's going to overflow. We better be ready. And everyone said amen. So the word of the Lord endures forever. You can't have better shoes than that. Hey? As I was growing up, I always wanted something solid to stand on. I needed something. I, I had that hunger for something solid. Solid ground. I needed solid ground. Everything was to come day, go day. Maybe, could be, I don't know. But when I came to Jesus, I knew as of that day, I was standing on solid ground. And I know that there were angels all around let us praise Jesus now cause we're standing in his presence on holy ground you see these are holy shoes these are uh, solid rock solid scriptural shoes we stand in when we obey the truth since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth you see where that comes from the, the, the pure mind will and emotion purely specifically in tune with God it comes from obedience Obeying the truth. No credit to us, but to the Holy Spirit. The one he sent to take his place. The vicar of the Christ, the Holy Ghost. It says, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Holy Spirit. Not your efforts. I'm going to do... As soon as I hear people say, in 32 years ministry this June, they say to me, I'm going to do this. I I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to do this in a month's time. You ain't going to do nothing. You're deceived. Because Jesus has already done it. And if you want what he's done for you all you have to do is trust and obey cause there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey see if you do trust Jesus you will obey him if I say to you I've, I've put a thousand dollars in a white envelope and I put it under an old work shoe and it's in Jones Street number three and the shoe is out the front on the footpath so if you trusted me and believe trust is belief 
you would get your GPS straight away and you'd key number six or whatever it was, Jones Street, and you'd go there and you'd pick up the hundred or the thousand dollars in an envelope under the shoe. And if we trust, we will do what the Lord says and obey and we will get the results. We are never, ever going to get the results that come with the living word through living our lives in the culture and tradition of our sinful parents and forefathers. Never in a million years. The, the Adamic cultures of the world will not save you but slay you. The Adamic cultures and traditions of races of the world will not save you but slay you in the end. They'll land you in hell because no good thing comes out of it. Because if they did, if that was so, you wouldn't have to be born again. And everyone said, amen. and amen and amen. So if you have family or friends or relatives that celebrate their culture and traditions and all that hoopla, you need to tell them it's useless wranglings of sinful men and women passed down through the archaic agents and everyone said it's useless there's only one culture that's going to enable you to be saved and that's holiness that's the way of the Lord holiness is another word another way of saying the word of the Lord Or you could say, holiness is another way of saying the truth. Messianic culture. Not Judaic. Not, not Irish, Samoan, Tongan. Not Filipino, Malaysian, Indonesian. British, Australian, Aboriginal, none of those cultures can save your soul from the fires of hell. They will, if anything, hinder your walk with Jesus to the place where you will be lukewarm. Partiality will come in and leaven and there will be a mixture in your life there will not be the purifying of your soul through obeying the truth or the doctrine of Jesus who says through Paul the Apostle in 2 Corinthians 6 11 18 come out from among them and don't be associated with them Touch not the unclean thing. Okay. Peter and Paul also talk about the useless wranglings of men. James talks about genealogies that are of no avail, that just create dissension among families. Useless. Family trees. Oh, we belong to this. We're of the Scottish uh, uh, tartan. And we all oh, we scat. And, you know, we come from in the Irish tribe that are down in Central Cork. My auntie, well, she was originally born in Bow Bells. 
and blah, blah, blah. All useless, all sinful, all heavily clad and laden with sin. And endemic uncleanness. Put it in the bin and move on with the spotless lamb, Jesus. <laughs> that you'll be the peculiar person. That you'll be the special person. The royal priesthood. And the holy nationality. We have to forsake our own nationality. Leave it. Depart from it. It's of no avail. Be proud that you're a child of the Most High God. It's where your pride should lie in Jesus. When you hear people, and you, I hear it all the time. Uh, I hear them talking in the shopping centres and everywhere, and they're talking about, oh, my uncle was this, and, and, and we're of the third tartan of the Hasarindagenda of, of the Antinterreticus that just passed us by. And if it's at all possible, and the Lord opens a door for me, I just tell him it's all in vain. I just say, vanity of vanities, you're wasting your time. You're deluded. You're on a wide road to hell, as it would be the highway to hell. I'd have you know. There is only one way, the narrow road. The culture of the true word of God, infallible and unadulterated, absolute and most certainly unwanted in the world today. Always has been. So much that we receive the witness by witnessing what they'd done to our master Jesus. They crucified him. They hung him up. And that's what they thought of his culture. And those of his own blood were part and parcel, according to the book of Acts, that the Jews crucified and killed the Christ. And that'll be the same for you. Your own will crucify you. They will come against you. We've been told by our Master Jesus in the writings of Matthew 10, 34 to 39. Think not that I come to bring peace. I come to bring a sword. I come to divide households and sort out sheep from goat. I come to divide mother against mother, daughter-in-law and mother-in-law and son and daughters and Fathers and he came to collect his bona fide followers and saints, those who would be willing to have their souls purified by obeying the living word that endures forever. And everyone said, Hallelujah! Our message today is scriptural shoes. Walk a mile in the shoes. I tell you what, if people only realise the shoes they're wearing are leading them to hell, if they only realise they need to put on the only shoes that lead to heaven, the scriptural shoes, the truth, that leads us all the way. We don't have to bother if they're going to wear out. We don't have to bother if they're going to have holes. The, the soles are going to fall off because our souls will be saved if we wear them. <laughs> but if we don't, and we just put aside our scriptural shoes for the day or for the weekend so we can have a bit of hanky-panky, 
or just for a season, maybe. And the devil sees you without your, sh your feet shod with the gospel of peace. You will have no peace because he'll torment you. When the devil looks and sees your feet are not shod with the gospel of peace, he rubs his hands together and he says, Beauty, I have an open door to torment this one. I have an open door to lead this one into sin and what will happen then they'll regret it and they'll feel depressed and down and I'll be able to have a laugh at them. I can even maybe cause them to lie in the process which is more sin. All flesh is as grass and the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Hey? The living word. The living Christ Jesus, Saviour and Deliverer. How blessed we are that we have shoes that billionaires can't have. Billionaires and trillionaires. Donald Trump can't wear my shoes. Because at present he's not willing to repent to give his money to the poor all of it and follow Jesus he may say he believes in God he may say and that there may be a God that's not good enough far full short by far Bill Gates can't wear the shoes I wear. He can't afford to. Religious hypocrites can't wear the shoes I wear. I wear the best shoes in the earth, in the universe. I wear scriptural shoes. And everywhere I walk, my enemies are defeated and taken care of. Because it's a righteous thing with my God to trouble everyone who troubles me. According to Paul, to the Thessalonians, I bank on it, I stand on it, I rely on it. Let's go to Thessalonians, please. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Chapter 1 and the verse is 6. It is a righteous thing with God to repay. With trouble, those who trouble you. You see that? It is a righteous thing with God to repay. 2 Thessalonians 1 6. To repay those who trouble them who wear scriptural shoes. You're listening. It's a righteous thing with God to trouble everyone. Who would dare endeavour to trouble those who have purified their souls through obeying the truth. Hallelujah. I don't have anything to bother about. Wherever I walk and wherever I go, I know anyone who troubles me 
is going to be troubled by my God because I go nowhere unless my feet are shod with the gospel of peace. And when people say, you're disturbing the peace, you say, no, I'm wearing the peace. <laughs> uh, my shoes are called peace. I come here to ask you if you want to sign up and purchase yourself a pair of peace shoes. Scriptural shoes, shod shoes. But you're going to have to pay the price. You're going to have to forsake your sin. And everyone said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Because Paul said that to Timothy. He said, to tell everyone, he told Timothy, that those who name the name of the shod shoe man. Those who name the name of Jesus must depart from sin. Otherwise, he can't deck you out with shod shoes. He can't deck you out with scriptural shoes. He can't deck you out with peace shoes. <laughs> so you won't walk in peace. You'll be troubled. Like the world is troubled to no end. To the place where they suicide, take drugs, drink booze to extremes that they have just... Have water on the brain. Gamble and, 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 and fool themselves into thinking they're going to get ahead. And, and their troubles are going to pass away because they're going to get some money and that's their only problem. If we only had money, everything would fade away and everything would be right again. Garbage. The problem is not money. The problem is not the colour of your skin. The problem is not your weight, height or your education standard. The problem is not your status. The problem is not that you came from a certain race or a certain people. The problem is you. You don't want to repent. <laughs> and when you repent and decide to do things Jesus' way and to have your soul, your mind, will and emotions cleaned up by the word of God, and purified, then you will have peace that surpasses the understanding of the mind. You'll have joy unspeakable. You will not be living in, in, in an inferior position anymore. You will not feel like, oh, I'm feeling this and I'm feeling, feeling the feelings of the feels of the lesbian song singer. Katy Perry, because she's always feels. And that's the way the God of this world wants you to live by feels. Fee, fee, feels. But Jesus don't want you to live by feelings. He wants you to live by faith in the Son, in Jesus, the shod shoe man. Hallelujah. The gospel. Shoe man, then you will have the original happy feet. <laughs> oh, your feet will be happier than any penguin in the North Pole. <laughs> Woo! Because he'll take you beyond the North Pole into glory. For those who wear the shod shoes and the scriptural shoes, they live in the secret place of the Most High and they abide in the shadow of the Almighty and they say of the Lord that He is their refuge. My God, in Him will I trust. The Christos Cobbler. 
<laughs> Woo! Jesus! Ow! Ah! The Christos Cobbler called all to repentance. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. So, getting back to the deconstruction mode. Shod, S-H-O-D. Well, you might have to look at that in the next part. Hey, We'll just see. Look, these shoes are not plastic. These shoes are not worldly shoes. They are not shoes only made for the intellect. These scriptural shoes are made, there's a pair designed to fit everyone. You know that? Every foot size. Hey? That's why Jesus said to his apostles and bona fide disciples, at times, don't even wear sandals, you won't need them. Because your feet will be shod by the Christos cobbler. <laughs> your, your feet will be shod with scriptural shoes. Hey? And you won't be bogged down worrying, troubling yourself over your adversaries and enemies. Or they might rise up against me. I hope so. <laughs> and then I'll witness the power of God even more. Hey? They might rise up against me. I hope so. And then I'll know who they really are. And their facade will be for forever revealed. Their superficiality will come to the surface. They might rise up against me if I start speaking this Jesus language. Then they'll say, oh, you're with that Jesus mob. And you'll have opportunity to say, oh, no, I'm not. No, I, I, don't, I don't hang around with that Paul Sheehan. You know, I just go there on a Sunday, you know. I don't really believe what he says. I just go there, you know, because my friend goes there or my girlfriend goes there or my boyfriend goes there or I don't really want to be there you know <laughs> it's like I'm with you <laughs> you know you, you know my name coward <laughs> and my middle name is compromiser <laughs> and I have two last names you know one is called cheap, <laughs> and the other one, well, I just adjust that as we go along. <laughs> you're no longer bogged down with that. Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Well, you better hurry up and do it. I've been waiting 15 years for that one. Just do it. Give me another testimony. Make me look like a hero again. You know, just concrete my calling as bearing the marks of Christ in my body. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. 1 John, can we go there and have a look there in 1 John? The first letter that John wrote in the rear of the Bible. 1 John and... Chapter 1, no, 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his command. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his command is a liar, and the truth is not in him. He who says he abides in him, 
ought also himself to walk just as he walked. You see that? Let's read that again. I'm going to paraphrase by the power of the Holy Ghost. 1 John 2, 3. Now by this we know that we wear scriptural shoes. We keep his command. That's how you know you're wearing shod shoes. That's how you know you're safe. You keep his command. Verse 4. He who says, I wear shod shoes, or my shoe, feet are shod with the gospel of peace, he or she who says, I wear scriptural shoes, and does not keep Jesus' command, is a liar, and he doesn't have Jesus in him. The truth is not in him or her. These are not my words. These are not the words of one saved, always saved. These are not the words of Seven Day Adventist or Hell Song or Hill Song. <clears throat> 1 John 2 5. But whoever wears scriptural shoes. They are the ones that truly love God and truly the love of God is perfected in them. By this we know we are in Christ, in God. Final verses 6. He says... He has put on scriptural shoes, ought himself also to walk in the same direction as Jesus. What do you think of that? There's no room there for known sin. There's no room there for once saved, always saved. There's no room there for, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to backslide for a couple of weeks and then I will come back and then I will do this and then I will do that and then I will... You know, when I hear people saying that, I know Jesus is not Lord. They are still Lord. For I am Lord. I am Lord, I do things the way I want to, and I am Lord. I don't wear Jesus' shoes. I like the trend of this wicked world. I am Lord, and I do what I want. Stuff everyone else. I just do what I want. <laughs> We're in one Peter chapter one and the verses twenty three. Having been born again, not of corrupted seed but incorruptible through the scriptural shoes through the word of God which lives and abides forever you see that born of the incorruptible seed how can you be born of an incorruptible seed and lived and live in a corrupt manner. There's only one way. You can do that. And that is to rebel against the truth. 
Because many will come on that day and they will say, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons. We did this, we did that, we built lots of buildings. We went from city to city in America and we built our buildings and we planted all our corrupt teachings amongst the people. We made millions of dollars and we became one of the biggest religions in the world. But we never did what you said. And he'll say, go away from me. I don't want to know you. But yet, they cast out the demons. They prophesied. And you can't do that without the Spirit of God. So we can conclude here today, you can actually have the Spirit of God and be Rejected by the Lord. According to Scripture. Now, you might think I added something in there, so we better read it for ourselves. In Matthew 7, let's read it together. Matthew 7 and verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Come on, read it with me. Then you can't say, oh, he said something in the pulpit. He's lying. He twisted it. No, get your Bible and read it. Read it there, sister. Read it. Matthew 7, 22. Many. How many? Many. Many. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast our demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice sin. Now, you see what it says? You can't cast the demon out of someone, a demonic spirit, in the name of a demon or in the name of a human. You can only cast the demon, a devilish spirit, out of a person in the name of Jesus. Because the demons will not listen to anyone else. They will attack you. As the scriptures say, we know Paul and we know Jesus, but you we do not know. And then the scriptures say that the demon possessed jumped on him. Here we have people who had the Spirit of God. Symbolic. Here it is here. But he said, go away. So that tells you something today about cruising along with Jesus in your uh, compromising, sin-loving convertible. No, it won't happen. You might have to join the people who say, I'll be in hell with me mates. I'll be in hell with the whores. I'll be in hell with my football stars. Enjoying myself. Well, you're welcome to go there, but I won't be going there with you. (laughs) I prefer to put on my scriptural shoes once again tomorrow. I don't even take them off, really. I sleep with them on. (laughs) And no, they don't smell. Because they're divine. I'm going to leave it there. Glory, hallelujah. 
and we'll move on in that next week, Father willing, eh? We move into the fourth part of that. I give you all the glory, Jesus. Everybody said, and amen.